I ended up getting a penalty. <laughs> so today we're off to High Rocks, Manchester. I'm quite excited, but also like super nervous. Chelsea's with me too in the background. <laughs> It's a super long event. I'll put it on the screen. We've got loads of running to do and quite honestly, you know I'm a weightlifter. <laughs> not really been training that much for it. I've done my usual CrossFit stuff. I've not really done a whole lot of specific training for High Rock, so it's going to be interesting to see how I can perform and how I do having not trained specifically for this. I've gone for the pro category purely because there's heavier weights, heavier kettlebells, heavier slab push, heavier slab pull and the wall ball is like standard CrossFit weight so I figured I might as well do that and go slower because obviously in the lower category people will be better at running and just going super quick i'm going to try and send it on the movements pace the run i reckon <laughs> but yeah let's get going down to the venue so busy as you can see there's a lot of people already doing it so the teams the pairs and the regular women have already gone and the so the pros that's us and the men we are on later on today so we're we're not on until four o'clock which is like fine by me i'm used to competing early in the morning and obviously I'm doing more than one event so it's quite nice to just have one event and then go <laughs> and i'm actually feeling so much calmer than usual which is really nice <laughs> yesterday i wasn't really feeling it i've not really been training for this and there is a lot of running which is not my jam but at the end of the day i'm just doing it to participate i'm just doing it to enjoy it to take part if you guys are interested in doing high rocks i would definitely recommend it just to have a go because there's so many people here of all different shapes and sizes and abilities it's not just like super fit people and if you don't do crossfit it's a really cool thing to do because it's not crossfit based yes it's stuff like Sled push, sled pull, a farmer carry, and wall balls. But there's no complex gymnastics. There is no weightlifting. There's no extra movements that are difficult in CrossFit. It's really accessible for like the everyday fitness person. I'm on a 4:40, so I've got quite a while to wait. We're just gonna hang around, have a look what there is to see, and warm up. And then I'll be on, and I'll let you know how it goes afterwards if I don't see you before. Such a great atmosphere, and I think it would be really cool to do these all over the world because they have them everywhere. So. Yeah. Sip that potion. I'm so done with holy ghosting. My birth, it is an omen. Lay me down up in the ocean until you see no motion. Right now, I can barely focus. I'm showing no emotion on your knees. Show your devotion. My skin is black but golden. I'm not here for bragging, boasting. Ain't lying, I've been chosen. Mind is burning, lots exploding. This is my magnum opus. Are you with me now? Are you with me now? Ain't felt this good in a while They want us to simmer down Can you hear me now? Am I going in and out? I stop and just look around To see if you're with me now Tell me are you with me now? Ready to put it down Start at the bottom already forgot them But they won't forgive me now You really ain't ready now You haters just in the crowd But still I just look around Are you with me now? Why you with me? Step in the fire Get ready to take it higher Real nigga coming out your ever fire Y'all want every black man to be rich and pride Why these wrinkles fuck up and turn into shy, huh? Cell phone became your brother Internet replace your mother You leaving homies on red It's no wonder all your friends dead Jealousy was a centerpiece So my best friends turn to enemies Sabotage my identity Why they wanna treat me like a Kennedy They wanna affect the legacy Protect the heart, I cut off the extremities I'll never be another piece In your recipe for social supremacy are you with me now? 
Said, are you with me now? Ain't felt this good in a while. They want us to simmer down. Can you hear me now? Am I going in and now? I stop and just look around to see if you're with me now. Tell me, are you with me now? Ready to put it down. Start at the bottom, already forgot them, but they won't forgive me now. You really ain't ready now. You haters just in the crowd. But still I just look around, are you with me now? Are you with me now? Are you with me now? Said, are you with me now? They felt this good in a while. They want us to see me down. Can you hear me now? Am I going in and now? I stop and just look around. To see if you're with me now. Tell me, are you with me now? Ready to put it down. Start at the bottom, I'm ready for cotton, but they won't forgive me now. You really ain't ready now. Hi Rob Stan, my voice is going. I'll update you probably later. Maybe in a bit. Maybe when I get home, depending on how much I die when I sit down. <laughs> how are you feeling Chelsea? Dead, me too. My legs. It's been a week since High Rocks. <laughs> I'll be completely honest with you, as I always am, I was plunged into a pit of depression after High Rocks. Today was the first day I was back in the gym. I'll go into a little bit more about that and why it happened towards the end of the video, but first I'm gonna recap the event. Firstly, I wanna say a huge thank you to Kirsty for getting all of the content I got over the weekend. Honestly, without her, I would have absolutely nothing. But ordinarily, I just set my camera up on a tripod and it films everything, but I was running around, so I had no way of filming myself. So, so thank you, Kirsty, so much. <laughs> and Dan as well, who did a little bit and he has just qualified to the world championships in vegas i'm so proud of him well done Dan. <laughs> so the event honestly the running was the worst part for me being a heavier athlete i was in the last heat of the pro women's division i pretty much set off last everybody was quite fast out of the gate and i'm not a runner so i knew that would be a terrible decision to go at that speed so i just slowed down paced myself it's definitely not one on the first 1k I needed to save myself for those later movements so I just chilled for the first bit. After that we had this ski erg and I love the ski erg, it was so good. I knew what pace to stick to, I knew what to do and I felt like I pulled a good pace on the ski. I was really happy with my performance there. Uh, it was only a thousand meters which is not too far but as a crossfitter we don't really do that far. <laughs> we'll do like calories or like 500 meters and obviously the majority of my training is weightlifting at the moment so I've not been doing a huge amount of that but I, I I've still got it <laughs> and I think the key is on the ski to not go out too hot so that you've got some energy left for the run after that because it's basically cardio straight back into more cardio so off I went on another run <laughs> now the sled push was the first one out of the sleds and it was heavy so the weights that you see that online they are 30 kilos less than the actual weights because for some reason high rocks don't include the weight of the scale in the weight of the sled even though it, obviously the weight of the sled is the weight of the whole sled but you do you Hyrox. <laughs> it was supposed to be 125 kilos ended up being 155 kilos so that is a lot more but i can push it i'm a weightlifter that's my jam so really enjoyed that i did go too fast to begin with and i think i did one straight lap on broken and that was a bad idea <laughs> my legs burned out and then after that i broke them up into like two halves and you've just got to keep moving once you've got a bit of momentum keep pushing through and it's only four laps in total and then you're off around running again i did not realize how much it was going to hurt going from the sled into the run i felt like if any of you have done crossfit before and done murph i felt like i had murph legs <laughs> like i was running they felt like cement or like i was running through thick mud it was that bad and i guess it's just going from that like high power output into like a jog <laughs> not good <laughs> after that was the sub pull and i really enjoyed this because i'm 100 kilos or actually i'm 103 kilos i basically used my body weight i pulled it would hold on like that kind of 
leant backwards as if I was in a tug of war and just used my body weight and then marched it back and I found that oh, frankly really easy like yeah the weight was heavy but because I'm so heavy it wasn't hard for me to move the weight I wish I had longer on the sled pull it was that much fun I just love like pulling and pushing things maybe I should go into strong woman instead <laughs> but that was that was exciting and again it was only four laps so it didn't really touch me and this time I didn't have the leg burn that I did after the sled push but again I had to run another 1k which was not fun none of the runs were fun and then burpee broad jumps by far the worst movement I have ever done ever but definitely the worst movement in high rocks it was just I think because my legs were so drained and so tired and this is like hitting the point now where it is longer than my typical crossfit workout and obviously without having trained properly it's far longer than I'm used to working out for and I felt that do you ever get that draining feeling where it's just like you get a dragging in your legs it feels like all of the blood is rushing away to your legs and away from your brain <laughs> and you just start to feel dizzy and disorientated and like every time you stand up or go down into the burpee you just feel like you're gonna pass out that is how I felt on the burpee broad jumps I just tried to every time I got up from the burpee do the biggest jump I possibly could so I didn't have to do as many burpees because it was the burpee part I was finding really difficult and I think my arms were burnt out a little bit from using the sled I just hit a massive wall in the burpee section and it was not fun but I want to say thank you to the judges that were so lovely to me and I think one girl one of them was clearly feeling really sorry for me and I was like I'm just here to finish it like I just I'm just want to do it I'm just here for fun I just want to get through the thing at that point she started cheering me on like yeah you've got this you can do it and it just gave me like so much life <laughs> thank you so much for that little bit of encouragement because I think sometimes when you're like towards the back of the pack they think that you feel really bad and honestly I wasn't I felt bad but I was still enjoying it and it felt like I went into it with the mindset I did my triathlon at where I was just doing it to complete it I tried to make the most of every moment and I was suffering there but I was still really celebrating the fact that I did it and was doing it and I was in the pro division competing in a sport that is not my sport <laughs> that is an achievement it was really nice of her to get on board with my little celebration <laughs> when I got towards the end and then of course I was back into another run which I hated I hated all of the runs <laughs> I just took them slow every time I wanted to stop I just said in my head just go a little bit slower and that worked because if you actually stop then it gets far worse and it's far harder to start again I find anyway and by this point I was getting into the like SAS mindset of I will finish this it may kill me <laughs> but there's medical attention available so I'm gonna finish it and there is no out <laughs> there is no quitting there is no way out of this I am completing the thing <laughs> which is is my mindset going into a lot of stuff it did remind me a lot of of being on SAS who does wins at this point the row I loved the row I had a really good time on the row the whole time on the run before I was like in a minute you get to sit down <laughs> which I was really looking forward to but also I'm tall I'm heavy I've got massive quads and I used to do gig rowing a little bit too so I've got a good pull on me and I just held a solid pace tried to get more oxygen back into my lungs back into my muscles used it as a bit of recovery but also went at quite a decent pace which I was proud of and then I got off the row and went on to the run again and that run didn't feel so bad I think because I had a bit of time sitting down <laughs> but it was still bad and by this point my toes had started to go numb I think the shoes that I was wearing didn't really fit me very well my feet were going really numb I was struggling with a lot of foot pain <laughs> so that didn't that that did not bode well oh and I also forgot around the run time between the burpees and the rower I ended up getting a penalty <laughs> because I missed like half a lap so there's like a board that goes up and it says how many laps you've done and you had to do two and a half laps so I got past the chip time I saw the board and it said two laps well I had the half left to go from where you passed through the speed gate there was literally like half a lap and then you go in so I was like oh I must have done two I'll go in I was delirious so I obviously hadn't added it up properly and just trusted the board I realized on my second lap which must have been just after the row that I had a five minute penalty because I'd skipped half a lap so what I actually had to do is every time 
I'd gone past that speed gate, I had to look at the board and it needed to say three. So it was like on lap three, I think. So I'd completed two laps and I'd started my third lap, but obviously I was only gonna do half of the lap. That was very confusing. I'm not fussed about the penalty. I wasn't going to qualify. <laughs> I was just going to do it. I just wanted to do the pro division. So I'm not fussed, but if you're gonna do it, look out for that make sure you count your laps if you're a bit delirious then maybe on the first leg of the run have a look what number it says up there so you don't make the same mistake as me and think oh it says two laps i've only got half left so after the row we had the farmer's carry and i love this i found it easy i did every lap unbroken because i think the casual bells were like 24 but Honestly, I remember it just like stretching my traps out. It felt so nice <laughs> and I was so knackered. I just locked it in. I think I might have even hook gripped, which if you're not a weightlifter, hook grip is a thing that you do to like assist your grip. So you kind of tuck your thumb, the bar goes through there and you tuck your thumb underneath and it secures your grip better. Because I didn't want to drop it and I didn't really want grip fatigue, I did that and it worked. I did it, I broke at the end of every length. I didn't try and go for more than one length. Then I would just gas out and that would be silly. So I did all of the lengths unbroken, but then put it down in between and had a little break. And then after that was a run. <laughs> and then we had the sandbag lunges and that was quite good. I don't think I've got any footage of any of the kettlebells or the sandbags. It was only a 20 kilo bag, so I found it pretty easy. The first few lunges I did really slow because my legs were still recovering for the run. But then I picked up some speed towards the end of those lengths and I quite enjoyed it my legs were really knackered so the form wasn't the best I don't like it when you, you know when you're like leg starts kind of wobbling inwards on a lunge and you that's when you know you're tired that was happening but obviously I got through it my legs are strong enough to do a load of lunges with a 20 kilo bag after that was the last one we had the run obviously and then the last one <laughs> and frankly I walked into the wobble area because there was no way I was gonna run and get myself out to then do 100 warbles the open division you only have to do 75 and i think the war ball is lighter we had to do 100 i love a war ball and i think i pretty much went full send on the first set in my head i had this is the last one i'm gonna do 50 unbroken <laughs> I didn't do 50 unbroken. <laughs> I, I probably died after around 25, I think it was. And then I was just like, I'm gonna leave it there and then do another 10. And then I think I did 10s consistently for a while and then dropped down to basically like a five and a two and a three <laughs> towards the end because I was dead. I was so dead. I needed food, I needed water. <laughs> and it was late at night. I got on at 4.40. We were still obviously still going at six o'clock because we're not like champions <laughs> it was such a long time to be doing an event way longer than i'm used to i was dead i think i sat on the floor before my last ones i took my shoes off because my feet were hurting so much i just took them off so in my photo over the finish line i'm holding my shoes in one hand and like cheering with the other the judges were really nice at the end they were so lovely to me but one thing on the wall balls in crossfit you're allowed to squat clean the first rep. That is how you start a wall ball. That is like the basic method of doing a wall ball is you squat clean first and then you stand up and do the wall ball and then go back down. And you obviously have to hit full depth. That was fine for me. But at high rocks, you're not allowed to squat clean the first rep. You've got to pick it up, stand up and then go down. And because I'm so used to squat cleaning the first rep, I kept doing that. So my first wall ball kept getting no rep and I was just like so demoralized. <laughs> but I finished anyway. <laughs> Overall, I think I finished about 10th in my age group. But as you know, I was just going to do it. <laughs> I, was just, I just wanted to go to complete it and to get my badge, which I'm gonna show you right now. There it is. See the little bit that says pro on it? <laughs> Should I wear it? I think I should got velcro on the back there we go <laughs> i'm a pro <laughs> could have entered the open category but that's not me the weights are lighter the wobbles are less and the stuff that's like crossfit there is less of and there's the same amount of running which is the bit that i'm bad at and the bit that i don't like in my head the debate was do i go up into the pro division do it to compete to do it to enjoy it 
and know that I've finished the Hyrox Pro at the heavier weight or do I scale down and try and like place well in the open division for me I compete because I enjoy it I compete for me I never compete to compete against other people so it was much more of an incentive for me to be like I'm gonna do the slightly harder one and just complete it than it would be to try and place and maybe get to Worlds or whatever in the other division. That doesn't interest me so much. What interested me was pushing myself as hard as I could because I know I'm probably not gonna do one of these again. <laughs> I mean, maybe in a relay or like a pair, <laughs> but I went into it knowing that this is not in my wheelhouse and I wanted to do my absolute best and that meant competing pro. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I made that decision, honestly. I think it's a good mindset to have when you're competing in anything is to never compete against other people just try and push yourself to the best of your ability because we're given two choices really you can either scale it down and try and place really well and compare yourself to other people which mentally for me does not bode well or try your absolute best maybe put yourself in a category that puts you really out of your comfort zone but achieve something you never thought you could with my triathlon that's exactly what i did i had the decision of doing the shorter distance or the longer distance and on the day i was still having a bit of a wobble I didn't know if I could complete the 700 meter open water swim, but I did. And I will remember that forever because I'm so proud of my achievement. And I think if I'd done the half, I wouldn't be as proud because I knew potentially I could have done the longer distance. For me, that's always the choice. Whatever you decide to do is totally valid. And whatever you decide to do for your body is totally down to you. But for me, as a heavier athlete, as a weightlifter, <laughs> and somebody that likes to move heavy weights, I couldn't say no to that pro division. <laughs> so I'm gonna go into the reason why I was depressed for the last week. <sighs> Basically, I went straight from the finish line to jumping in a car and driving home from Manchester to Cornwall, which took seven hours. I didn't get home until about 3 a.m. That was reason number one. So normally I really struggle with the dip after competitions. I always have a bit of a crash. I'm usually depressed for about two to three days and then I kind of get back to myself. I get back to the gym. I start doing more healthy habits. The CNS fatigue wears off and my adrenaline comes back to normal. That did not happen this time. I was so broken. I could only walk if I kept my legs completely straight on Monday and Tuesday and I had to go back to work. So I was walking around teaching <laughs> with my legs like in so much pain. Having that late night makes my mental health bad straight off the bat. It just got considerably worse throughout the week and the day before yesterday was probably my worst day of the whole week and normally by that time i would be recovered from speaking to a few other people that did high rocks with me they have experienced more of a post-competition dip than they normally would having done like a crossfit competition so i don't know whether it's something to do with the style of event or maybe the traveling but it affected me <laughs> basically i managed to function on a really low level and I managed to go to work and do my job as normal, but anything else was out of the question. You've just gotta not be hard on yourself if you don't go back to the gym immediately. I went back to weightlifting today and I loved it. I had the best time and I just waited for that buzz to come back for me to be excited about it. So I think I built up a little bit of fear because the event itself was so painful. <laughs> and I think in my brain it had like registered it as it was gonna be that painful, but it wasn't. I implemented all of my little self-care things that I do to bring myself back to being mentally healthy and it's worked, but it frustratingly took far longer than it normally would. My whoop recovery for the whole week has been yellow, which is really unusual. The day after Hyrox, I had 5% and I was in the red. And then I'll show you the little graph. Uh, you can see I've been, I think I had one green day and normally across the week I have mostly green days. So that was savage. <laughs> I wasn't training at all in the week. So that's just showing how long it's taken my body to recover from this. Even now, I don't feel like I'm back to where I was before the competition. I feel like I'm still struggling with a little bit of CNS fatigue. I feel like I've got no 
go like I can't you know when you're like doing a really high adrenaline workout or a really explosive movement or like maxing out your deadlift you need that like that go that adrenaline I feel like that's not there right now and that's okay I'm sure it'll come back but would I recommend that you do a high rocks without training <laughs> no don't do a high rocks without training I should have trained for it I think the reason obviously I didn't is because I thought that it might get cancelled. <laughs> Cases have been rising again in the UK and I thought that it might have got cancelled. That was back in December and then it didn't happen. So I hadn't really been training running. I've just been really enjoying my weightlifting training and doing CrossFit and just, it's no excuse really. I should have trained for it. But equally, when I thought about not doing it, I was like, no, you can do anything you set your mind to. If you can do SAF, then you can do high rocks without training. That's why I did it. <laughs> Would I recommend you do the same thing? Absolutely not. I think you should follow a training plan, definitely run more and give it a go, but train for it first. If you are a runner that can push a heavy sled and do some strength-based movements, I would massively recommend this event for you. This would be right up your street if that is the description of you as a person. If you are more attracted to like endurance-based workouts than you are like short burst, high power output workouts, then I would definitely recommend doing a high rocks. And I would recommend it to anybody really. If you really wanna challenge yourself, especially if you do CrossFit, if you wanna do something that's like a bit out of your comfort zone, you know it's gonna be hard and it's something a little bit different I would recommend it to you and if you're ever thinking about competing but in your head you're saying but I'm not good enough I'm not strong enough I don't look like an athlete that is all completely wrong you don't have to look like an athlete you don't have to be a certain way and anyway what is looking like an athlete the definition of being an athlete is that you are proficient at a sport it has nothing to do with looks whatsoever you can compete just because you want to you can do what i've done and compete just to finish it just to say i've done a high rocks just to show the people at work and they see the crazy event that you've done on the weekend and they're like why would you even do that <laughs> like do it for that <laughs> You don't have to do it to qualify for world championships or to come first or to place high. Like we don't need to care about those things. If you want to do it just to do it, then here's your permission, <laughs> go for it. This event is gonna be huge and I reckon there's gonna be a lot of people all over the world giving it a go. And you can go back and try it again and try and beat your previous time, which is super cool. If you would like to use my discount code as well, it gets you 10% off. I will put it in the description box below because it's like a long one it's like hyrox dash beth or something like that but it should get you discount for this season and i think the next one is in london but even if you're in america or australia and i know some of you are they do them all over the world so give it a go the event itself was so well organized it was really cool as you could see in that like venue they'd got everything pretty much right there was no issues with warm-up or heat times or any of that and it was such a cool event to be a part of and if you're thinking i'm too heavy to do a high rocks hopefully i'm proof that you can do it even if you're 100 kilos <laughs> i really hope you enjoyed this video guys if you're interested in any of my training performance how i eat any of that please do head over to my channel i've got lots more content that you can check out thank you for being part of my little community i will see you in the next video bye